everyone, this is Amanda um, with another rendition of Ask Stacy and Amanda with the Bank of North Dakota on Facebook Live. Um, don't forget, we are live every single Tuesday, so don't forget to turn on those live notifications and um, like us so you're notified every single time we go live, usually at 2.30 on Tuesdays, but who knows, we might have some special additions or something coming up over the next several months. Um, so don't forget, if you do have a question about anything we're talking about today, go ahead and leave us a comment below or send us a direct message if it's something that you don't want to ask in front of everybody. Um, today we are back again at Bismarck State College in the Frontier Precision Lab to talk to Angie Malik, Malik of <laughs> Milakovic. Milakovic. Good, I have good. practiced so many times and I still mess it up. Um, so she is an associate professor of geographic information systems, which we are going to talk about today um, in our high demand career programs. So Angie, can you tell me a little bit about what geographic information systems is okay. and how it's used? Okay. GIS or geographic information systems is a software mm -hmm. that we have here. We offer it as a two year degree. But um, it's basically a software that talk, that sh with data that you collect or data that has already been collected, mm -hmm. you can show or make maps that show location about things that are important to whatever discipline it is that you care about. Mm -hmm. So basically it's about making maps, looking at data differently, mm -hmm. um, and being able to use spatial location in order to be able to show things, okay. anything. I mean, oh. it's pretty wide open. So. That is pretty neat. Um, so what are some kinds of careers or jobs that a student who has a credential in GIS, what kinds of jobs could they get? Oh boy, you know, you could get jobs in, in dang near everything. That's mm -hmm. the thing that I love about geography or geography-based jobs is that everybody cares about geography. Mm -hmm. Geography is super important and GIS is part of that. GIS is the, you know, G is for geography. Mm -hmm. IS is for information systems. And so we're taking computer-based software, we're putting it with the G, which is geography, mm -hmm. and everybody uses geography. So the types of jobs people can get are in um, anybody that cares about geography, which is basically everybody. Mm -hmm. So um, for instance, the Bank of North Dakota cares about geography. They yeah. care where their students are, where they're coming from, where mm -hmm. they're going to, just as universities do. Mm -hmm. um, universities care a lot about where their students are coming from. So they care, um, you know, so businesses, universities, colleges, um, in North Dakota, environmental places, um, yeah. places that care about um, public health, for mm -hmm. example, engineering firms. McDonald's. McDonald's, <laughs> that's right. I was just talking to her yep. about how the McDonald's over here by BSC was put there for a reason because it's next to an interstate and it's next to a gas station. Mm -hmm. um, if you look historically at McDonald's across the United States, they're next to a gas station. Yeah. High you know? traffic area. Yeah, and people know McDonald's, they know the brand. Mm -hmm. And so when they're gonna fill gas and they're driving across the country, they already know what a cheeseburger tastes like, so they're gonna take the chance, or not take the chance, mm -hmm. at the no-name place, and McDonald's is right there, so it's geolocation. Yeah. So, you know, there you go, there's yeah. all kinds of examples. For sure, and I mean, geolocation, I mean, every time I open an app, a new app on my phone or something like that, it asks, do you wanna turn on your location services? Well, right. odds are the people who are doing that and planning that with all of these apps, they probably have some kind of education in geographic information systems, right? right? Yeah, yeah, They and you know, they've, they've set it up so that they can ping where you are so that mm -hmm. they can market to you. Um, for example, um, you've probably heard of the clothing store, The Gap, Yep. You know, they've hired GIS people to figure out where certain age groups live so they can market certain brands of jeans to certain age groups depending on where they live and then they know mm -hmm. where to put the next, uh, the Gap store. They Absolutely. know where to put those up yeah. based on that, so. All these data people, so, I know. so tricky. I know. Marketing to us. <laughs> so what are the different degree options in, um, in GIS, here at BSC specifically? Okay, so we have three options. One is a two-year technical degree, mm -hmm. um, and that is really reserved a lot of times for students that don't have any college background at mm -hmm. all, but need to have a degree to get their foot in the door to mm -hmm. be able to apply for a position somewhere. Okay. Um, and then we have a certificate option, which is a lot of GIS with some mm -hmm. um, AutoCAD and some other type of more um, drafting type mm -hmm. um, background so that they can enhance their skills for where they're already working. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you can't get a certificate, you know, can't get a job with a certificate. You need to have mm -hmm. a degree of some sort. 
And then the third option is a very small certificate. It's four classes, mm -hmm. uh, four classes in GIS that a lot of times are picked up, that, and it is our most popular option oh, because we have students that are already in positions all over the place mm -hmm. from public health, archaeology, engineering in North Dakota. I've seen um, students in energy as well, just taking our, our four credit certificate so they can enhance you know, and be able to map whatever it is that their specialty is, mm -hmm. whatever their disciplinary is. So just like we were talking um, with Matt from the uh, cybersecurity program last week, I mean, this program and this skill set seems like it's really flexible and really diverse. So if you're interested in this program specifically, but you want to be in healthcare or you want to be in marketing or something like that, I mean, you don't have to you know, be out there in the fields with the surveyor right. necessarily to right. do this program. You have a lot of options. Absolutely, and we do have a lot of people that will maybe not, maybe the degree or their certificate isn't what they're looking for, but they mm -hmm. just want a couple classes. Okay. And we have a lot of people that will just take a couple classes mm -hmm. and then they go on and do great things. That's really cool. So. So we are going to, I'm gonna get up close and personal. Angie is going to show us about this right here, the sandbox. So I'm gonna grab that tripod um, while I talk. And basically, we're going to talk about hands-on learning and how important it is. So we are going to um, see the sandbox. Okay, I'm gonna um, try to make a, okay. make a hand, uh, we, big, there we go, get some color Wonderful, we turned off the lava feature. Um, <laughs> yeah, we turned that off. That's so. very popular with kids. I'm sure. <laughs> it was raining lava yeah. earlier, so. <laughs> All right, so tell me a little bit about this sandbox, Angie. Okay. Well, my coworker, Dave Sagsveen, who is the civil engineering tech um, program instructor here, built this over the summer last year. Mm -hmm. And what it is, it's an augmented reality sandbox. So I, you can't see this up here, mm -hmm. but way up on the top, we've just got an Xbox Connect and a regular projector. And uh, when it works together, I won't get into the nuts and bolts of it, but basically we have sand down here. And as we move the sand around, uh, the Xbox measures where the sand is at based on uh, the location of where the top of the sand. And it draws these, I don't know if you can see this, but little yeah, lines. Yeah, here, we'll get in there. So we've got lines of constant elevation. And what we're really trying to show people here, this is a great teaching tool for um, young kids, I mean, kindergarten kids all the way up through grandmas and grandpas love playing with this because mm -hmm. we're looking at lines of constant elevation. So we can see how water thro uh, flows through a landscape. Um, if I move this around, you'll be able to see I'm uh, starting to create a channel, mm -hmm. and the water, which is all the blue, is running into the, the lowest elevation. And so we're able to do hydrology um, examples with it. Okay. And just, honestly, it's a great teaching tool to get everybody, you know, a, a different perspective on environmental science. Mm -hmm. And so this is a geographic, you know, it's, it's geography for sure, but you can use this in all different types of disciplines. This is also very important in surveying because they care about lines of constant elevations mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. All right, so getting up close and personal again, um, right. turning this down. So as we're looking around the lab, I mean, there is a ton of stuff in here. Like there's um, surveying tripods over here, there's the data collectors over here, and then there, there's drones in here. So um, <laughs> as well, like really nice ones. So <laughs> We're like Hollywood almost. I know, like I see <laughs> the drones that all of my favorite YouTubers use yeah. online. So um, I mean, let's talk about the equipment that the student, students use other than this really cool sandbox. Okay, well we do have a class in um, like the drones or the UAS, UAVs are used in both uh, GIS and engineering tech. Um, for GIS, it's just you know being able to fly a location and be able mm -hmm. to find like take pictures of of the ground or surroundings in parts of the visible or outside of the visible spectrum of what you can see. Mm -hmm. So we can see um, places that are hot with thermal imaging if we had a thermal camera on it. You know, for example, like if we were flying over like Lake Nelson. Mm -hmm. Up by, I, I don't remember. The, is it the, by here? It, it's it's up north. I, I can't should remember know what this. plant it's by, but I know I should. It could be. Yep, I think it's the old station. Yep. So when you fly over it, regardless of if it's day or night, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see that it's glowing in a different color yeah, because that lake's of the thermal. Warm. <laughs> right, because it's always <laughs> a little bit warmer than the than the surroundings. Mm -hmm. You know. So there's one example, um, okay. and then in. In engineering tech, it's also used so we can take pictures and then mosaic them together mm -hmm. and just use them as a backdrop for being able to create new data. That's so neat. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So what kinds of students typically pursue um, 
uh, pursue these programs? Okay, um, honestly, most of the time our students are not necessarily those that are right out of high school, and that is only because of the fact that this technology is not usually taught in the high school mm -hmm. level. Sometimes we do, there are some classes or some teachers in North Dakota that do um, teach it, but okay. it's few and far between yeah. because the skill set has to be pretty high in order to to do that, and the teachers are already stretched pretty okay. thin. So and it's so, mostly those working adults yes. who are coming back to get more education. Yeah, people that are already on the job that have heard about it um, would like to move into it, um, mm -hmm. would like to change careers within a company. They want to you know get into GIS or be a survey tech or mm -hmm. be a CAD drafter. And so they come back and they take these classes, and this is traditionally for GIS and engineering tech. Oh, Most of our students, um, you know, on average, I would say are around 30 years old. Okay. And if you guys remember, um, maybe I already said this, like a month ago, we had Zane, who is a student in the engineering tech program. Andrew said he's actually just down the hall yeah. in another lab right now. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so how would a student um, get started in this program here or even if they're at another college okay. is GIS available well you know GIS as a degree is only available at two institutions in the mm -hmm. university system but it is okay. it is offered widely across the United States mm -hmm. um, at the technical level BSE is the only place in, North, in the North Dakota University system okay. where you can get that um, but you can get higher level degrees all the way up through master's degrees in geography mm -hmm. which is where GIS would fit but yeah. the GIS fits in all you know degrees you can take classes, mm -hmm. basically, in almost every, um, every well, the big schools, okay. for sure, but not necessarily degrees. Okay. So yeah. uh, I would say look at your catalog, talk to your advisor, mm -hmm. and see if it's available. Yeah. And we've been talking a lot about advising recently, so everybody should know who their advisor is by now. If well, you're I interested, so. yeah, right? <laughs> if, <laughs> so if you're interested in taking um, a GIS or a geography related class or something, just talk to your advisor. They'll probably be able to give you some guidance on that. So awesome. Well, Angie, any parting words that you want to impart on any of our viewers, both live and oh. not live, about the Geographic Information Systems program? Well, you know, I would say that if you don't know, what you want to do with your life, you should do geography or GIS because if you're the type of person where you you, you change your ideas about what you want to do very often, mm -hmm. this is a great field to be in because geography is everywhere. Everybody cares about it, and there are jobs and good paying jobs in it. Yeah. Yep. Uh, geography is you know your mom and dad might not tell you to go into it because it doesn't make you money, but it really can, and it can really touch your heart because mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want in it, and there will be a job out there for you. Awesome. Well, yeah. this is wonderful. Thank you, Angie, so much for um, bringing me into the uh, the Frontier Precision Lab Yay. to, um, you know, experience all of this, to see all of the cool stuff you have in here. Um, don't forget, join us next week. If you haven't already liked us, turn on those live notifications. I will be back at Dickinson State University to talk to them about studying for finals. Um, I know there are some colleges that graduate already, like, this next weekend, um, but I know finals are coming up for most of you, so tune in for that. And we will see you next week. Bye.